So uh, I'm going to go ahead and ask, uh, let me introduce our team. To my, to my left is Dr. Karthik Goja. I think all of you know him. To my right is Dr. Vishal Kapoor. Uh, they both are co-directors of our course. Uh, to, to his, uh, in front of him is Dr. Twinkle Singh. She's one of our endovascular fellows uh, for this year. Uh, behind, we have our interventional cardiology fellow. Uh, and behind, we have Ray Lascano. Our nursing team is uh, fantastic. We have Jen. And of course, we have the great Mac. And, and we, we're, we're running around here with Damien, as well as Habib somewhere. They're always in, uh, disappearing and doing the work. So Twinkle, why don't you go ahead and present the case? Yeah. Can we have the slides? Hi. Uh, hello, everybody. Um, so next slide, please. So our case today is about a 58-year-old male ex-smoker with past medical history of diabetes, hypertension, hyperlipidemia, uh, stage 3 CKD, uh, previous history of bypass surgery, healing uh, toe amputation yeah, yeah. site. And on the right side of the screen, you can see what his um, the current also looks like. Next slide. Okay, so you got an arterial duplex here uh, that showed uh, that the left SFA had intimal hyperplasia, ISR, with a peak systolic velocity of 343. We found that popliteal occluded with <coughs> one was not visualized and below the knee that's also not visualized as well. Next slide. Okay, he's on um, at home on Torsum I-20, aspirin, Ator Lipitor, uh, Eliquis, Toprol, uh, currently on Zosin uh, for the ulcer and insulin. His labs are pertinent for hemoglobin of 12.4, platelets 432, and a creatinine of 1.42. So we went ahead and we got the angiograms here. I'm not sure if yeah, we can. Yeah, we can go ahead. Well, yeah, let me start with the angiograms. Yeah. So, 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 so yeah. what we're going to do is we're going to go. So what we did, Lawrence, we, we went ahead. And actually, Vishal is going to go ahead. Okay, so we went ahead. We got right access. So the patient was hydrated. We went ahead and got ultrasound guided, right access in the common femoral. You can see in the iliac, there's no inflow disease. And I think it's very important, obviously, for all of us to look at inflow. And then you can see at the SFA, you've got severe instant stenosis in the mid, uh, mid uh, stent or in the prox stent. And then mid distal, you have a, a very, very tight stenosis right there, focal stenosis. And then I think the real culprit is really going to be your, uh, your uh, popliteal occlusion right here which you're gonna see uh, in a second. Here comes the popliteal occlusion. So the popliteal is occluded and you have these multiple collaterals coming up. And then you give rise to this, this uh, posterior tibial artery that comes down uh, at the level of the mid posterior tibial artery. Next. So, so, so the, and then at the level of the foot, you can see that the, uh, the, the antisomal distribution is clearly at the level of the, uh, the posterior tibial. And the posterior tibial is the dominant artery in the foot. And, and you can see here slowly the posterior tibial also forms the arch. And I, we believe that we're probably at stage one is, is to revascularize this posterior tibial. And stage two, maybe to come back to the anterior tibial or the perineal. Next. So, so, so we can see here a, a focal a, a view of this clearly shows that the pop is occluded, multiple jig collaterals unnamed and named. And you can see here, you looks like a short segment, but clearly you can see the unfavorable cap. Also, you'll see later that it has a collateral coming off at that level. So what we did was, we, 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 this is probably the best way to see it. So you can see here that here's the unfavorable cap and a big collateral that comes off at the, at the occlusion. Next. So we went ahead, and what, what we always do in this case is, especially when we're going live, since we know that the, the cap is unfavorable above, we got ultrasound guided access below and just put a micro wire in. Next. And then offline, we went ahead and took with a selective catheter better pictures. And you can see there's some sort of little channel that we thought was a channel. Next. So actually the next one after this. So we went with a hydrophilic wire. I mean, we took Dr. Tamala's lecture very seriously. And you can see here, we're going to go with the hydrophilic wire. Coming up. And here's the hydrophilic wire. We're going to play this. The hydrophilic wire was able to make its way through into, obviously, that's just shoving the catheter down. Forgive my roughness there. And then, and, and then we go ahead and get the hydrophilic wire through to about this level. And then you'll see what happens. So the hydrophilic guide wire goes into some sort of weird collateral uh, or some sort of pouch, looks very good up to this level, and then boom, it makes a turn, and then <laughs> does very, so all sorts of funky things that, that we don't want it to do. Next slide, please. So, so then what we did was we came from below, so we don't have a sheet below. So we, we took a Cook CXI, we took a Cook CXI, and then we, we went sheetless, and you can see here that we just have the CXI, which is an O1A catheter. And we, we went with another hydrophilic wire from below. And again, you could see 
what we have is that the wire is is coming up and actually curling because of the uh, the nature of the CTO. And this is what uh, Dr. Tamala's lecture about crossing CTOs with with the wire uh, uh, tip grades as well as you know the tip weight really makes sense. So the tip weight wire is not enough. So at this stage, we decided to switch out to a wind wire, um, and we're going to go with a wind wire from below to try to penetrate this cap, which I do not think we'll have a hard time penetrating. I really believe that this is favorable for us because of the, uh, of, of the way it is and the support that we're going to have. We're going to externalize this, and, and what, what I'm going to do is do a quick intravascular ultrasound, and then we're going to use a serenader to open this up and then do a DES. And the plan is to do Rotorex of the, of the SFA ISR as well of, uh, as as well as the distal SFA. So I cannot hear you. Unfortunately, I still don't know why I don't have any audio. Uh, it's but, because but, uh, nobody's speaking. Uh, ah. so, okay. Oh, well, good. Okay. Good. So 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 then what I'm going to do is just go ahead and uh, and uh, and and start this. So thank, thank you. So I'm going to uh, any comments, Lawrence, on our plan? Anything that we should do? Well, I was just going to see if you could hear us. PK, can you hear us in your ear right now? Test, test, test. Let me get off the road map. Hold on. Okay. Here. Test, test, test. Okay. I cannot hear anything, so I'm going to get started. So All we're right. going to go here with this with the, with the wind wire. You can see it. Like I was telling you, I really felt that a good feeling here, making a very nice turn. We can hear them fine. And this is what we thought was the perineal. Maybe not. So I'm very, very happy with the way it's going. Just I'm going to ask me, Dr. Guja to advance the camera here. Give me a heads here. up when you think we can, when we can speak. Can somebody hear? Uh, can somebody hear? Because I can't hear anything. Yes, uh, uh, Danny, I can't hear anything, uh, Lawrence or any of the panel. Yeah, test with the, the events. Yes. All right. Yes. While we're, we're getting right. set up, you, before you break our ears with the so, over, overload. Oh, wait, hold on. From a panel standpoint, uh, any ideas on the the mm, technique above and below? Would us. you guys bail out to a below knee approach yeah, fairly yes. quickly? Mm, hold on. Um, Brian, what do you think? Yeah, I, I think he uh, pointed out the fact. That so we're gonna we're gonna go a little bit in a lateral. different plane here. We're gonna back it up, back up one more. Place. When you have an inclusion, so obviously the other wire is not in a good plane here. Sort of we're gonna pull the other wire back. Dig into the cap. Yes, yeah, so Dr. Kuj is gonna pull the other wire back, and I'm gonna have him. Predictably, that didn't work. Just give a little. Maybe come forward with the other wire. I do think that in these type of cases, especially if you know that you have a trifurcation. Seems like you were in some sort of calcium. I can kind of see the calcium. It's if you don't Might always to prep do the that. leg, it's a good idea to at least prep the leg for those cases <coughs> because it just makes you move to that right But I wish I had your guys' quicker. advice. It's sort of an emotional barrier when you have to <laughs> cut a hole in the drape, re-prep the foot and all of that. Yeah. So for these type of cases, yeah. I think yeah. it's yeah. good to plan on prep the leg and be ready to go retrograde because you know your mic. No, no, no. I agree with the point of section tool before you flip to retrograde, but yes, a low threshold. If you have no self-control, you need to set a timer on your integrate. Limit Slur. of when you're going Slur. to stop. I, I, but uh, mm -hmm. all he Can did was contact? stick a wire down, a hydrophilic wire, and it selected collateral. Uh, Let me just see where this goes. There it goes. There. Oh. I mean, of course it is, but you should maybe try a little bit more aggressively, would be my opinion. I, I've the, found that the geniculate uh, collaterals are always the easiest to engage. And what you need to do is try to find that cap because it's always parallel to where that uh, collateral is coming off. So uh, many times that'll give you a different track to go through. But this seems to have worked pretty well. What, uh, what's your uh, f favorite wire? And not, not so much by brand, but rather outstanding job, but rather the idea of jacketed versus non-jacketed from below. Any, any ideas? I've tried uh, several different wires uh, that have been suggested to me. Uh, Regalia wire, uh, Gladius, what have you. I tried so many <laughs> different combinations. Uh, catheters and wires. I, from the bottom, I always here, use an angle glide wire advantage that seems to work best here. for me, along with the CXI the catheters. So I've, one thing that I want to raise, given the fact that they were having significant difficulty crossing either cap, would anyone have put a 5.6 splinter in? But I think I, I would have wanted a, a, a sheath in to give me a little bit more support to get through that distal cap and through the proximal end. Um, but I, that's one approach here. An anti-grade sheath, you're saying about the... Uh, yes. You mean from the PT? From the PT. Yeah. Yeah. PT. Yeah, I, I like this idea. I like the uh, minimalist approach. I like the, the support catheter and 018 wire and 014 wire. But I was really trying to get to the idea of, of jacketed versus non-jacketed. Almost all of the jacketed wires I've used, and I just like the idea of a, 
of a jacketed wire to cross these CTOs. It's what we do in the corn areas, and it usually will work. And the real key is it's like letting a, trying to walk a big dog. You try to let the dog go its own way, but you need to control it in some way. These, these wires will find subintimal planes uh, almost invariably. As we go through this, uh, it's, it's a remiss of me. Uh, I'm Lawrence Garcia from Boston. Let me introduce the panel. We have Dr. Croissant, Dr. DiRobertis, Dr. Ferruja, Dr. Jenkins, uh, Dr. Parish uh, Tam, as well as uh, I think Dr. Is still up here? Or did he take you could off? come back and straight up. You could oh, escape. Oh, well, you're a smart man. So, uh, all righty. So, um, we're going to try to follow uh, PK. Are we a uh, thumbs up or a thumbs down on audio just yet? Right there. We're thumbs up. PK, can you hear me? Yes. I can finally hear you now, Lawrence. How oh. are you? Hey, Welcome. very well. Good God you bless you. All righty. Well, we're, nice we're to watching you work from below, Second. and we walk through your work from above, and we're up to date with everything you said, so we could hear you fine. Um, can you give us an update as to what's going on with you? So right now, uh, you saw that the wire was going sub from above, I mean from below, so we're trying from above and below now, trying to meet the wires, so I, 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 I might have to do some sort of, there, yeah, that might be it, uh, no, I might have to do some sort of cart technique here, Lawrence, to try yeah. to get us through maybe a facilitated card or something like that. So I'm just trying to see. So why don't you, while we keep working, if you want to move to the lectures um, and great. come back, I think I think what we'll do is we'll at least stay pretty oh. focused on, and I try to be on time. Hold on. Hey, PK, can I, can I ask you a question before we switch over, if you can hear me? Absolutely. You, you've got a catheter from below, it looks like, a support catheter. What about taking a, a CTO wire, putting a little angle on the tip, and trying to use that as yeah. a little bit of a reentry uh, catheter, reentry yep. type technique I'm gonna do, below? I'm going to do that right now, Brian. I'm going <laughs> to I'm going to put a CTO wire. I'm going to I'm going to. This is an Ashtado. Actually, this is a Connect. Not a Connect. What is it? No, no, no. It's a Win. It's oh, a yeah, Win 250 T. And <laughs> and so I'm going to try to go. I may, I may go with an 018. That's Karthik coming from yeah, above. I can actually touch the catheter. He's touching the catheter. So I may have to pull the catheter the, back. Yeah, Hold on. Let me pull the catheter the back. Catheter. Sometimes pulling the catheter back kind of helps him find the plane. Yeah, let me get it yeah. There you go. You interact, you're probably yeah. in the same area. Yeah. Lawrence was talking about polymer jacketed um, uh, uh, wires, and I agree. That's what I use normally. But it looked like you were kind of spiraling around in the intimal plane there. That's why I think a CTO wire may do it for you. <laughs> All right, here's the CTO close. wire now. <laughs> PK, do you, uh, do you cut your catheter when you're working from the bottom since you don't have a sheath in? Nope, it's some diaphragm above. Yeah. No, I do not cut my catheter at all, uh, just because I think that, you know, these you know if anything does happen, it becomes an issue, right? I thought you were going to roadmap. So mm -hmm. I, I want to keep things the way we are no, and just work. So we're going to give a little roadmap to see where we are. And the other we're going to try to see whether PK, we can. Yeah, the other thing I do with the, uh, crossing catheters is that I use them to my advantage to either support or not support the distal tip of these polymer jacketed wires. So rather than giving a bunch of specific names of wires, I think from below you would start with a polymer jacket. You would use either the increased tip support or decreased tip support, depending on whether you advanced your microcatheter or withdrew your microcatheter and escalate up through, if you're a coronary guy, uh, the Corny CTO top wire. So looks like he's doing better there. So. And that, that was really the key. Yeah, it looks a little try better. To, oh. Try to move up with wire uh, escalation, but the jacketed as well as non jacketed have this in, tip strength, which is distinct from the, yeah, I think the wire. Yeah, I think we entered. You, I, I, I. you can pull, pull your catheter back and your yeah. wire back. Put your, pull your give me a torque on yeah, this. I have one. Okay, let's check an ACT. I need a talker, guys. Another, another talker, please. Yeah. Thank you. Doctor, my mask keeps slipping down. I apologize. Just a question to the panel. Yeah. Would, uh, yeah. Anybody use Ivis assisted to find the cap or the, the Japanese are doing a great job of leading with Ivis, and uh, it's really remarkable. I, I don't have the patience to do Give that, a... but it's really remarkable to see the central okay. lumen and know. Like Ocelot and all these other give you uh, from above. devices. Did you have a to really know that you're inside yeah. of the, the old, whether it's hibernating or no, not. Exactly. They, they do a really see. remarkable yep, job. Right. Yep. They can do yeah, rocket. Yeah, Lawrence, we crossed. Wait, 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 wait. You know, because you want yeah, to try Lawrence, and preserve we as many of these collateral as possible. You can wire it into the capital. So it would be nice if you can try and stick into the room. Because once you do cartilage, there's a chance for the dissection. You might shut off these collaterals. 
And often I find, find so much difficulty. Yeah, I've good. seen, uh, you got it. You know, you got it. You got it. switch to a full French lender sheet and do the PT and uh, I don't think we need to. Uh, it's an 018, uh, okay. uh, you know, a blind advantage, you know. We should you capture it when it comes up. Save that for us, Yeah, one second. So, so Lawrence, we were able to cross. How many cases you have, you know. Yeah, I just saw that, PK. That was outstanding work. And it just shows and the due diligence you have to do to cross some of these CTOs. Yeah. That was that was yeah. really good technique. Thank no, you. Sure. And did you you've got no. it into the catheter, right? So you're uh, yes, yeah, we got it into the catheter. Yeah, yeah, I want to torque it. Right. Yeah, I did. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to externalize the wire. Uh, go ahead, balloon and your plastic. You don't have much water. And 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 what we're going to do is yeah, no. we're going to go ahead and, right. and do a do a quick IVIS. And then we're going to balloon angioplasty and come back to you when we do the serenader. Yeah, no. yeah so that would be an important step for us to see. The serenader is a newer balloon. I think it would be very instructive to see it. So, Lawrence, what we've done is we, we, we've externalized the wire through the catheter. We've then changed out for a for a 3 0 coronary balloon here, just making a track. And we did the IVIS. So, let me show you the IVIS. Guys, play the IVIS now. Laura? You I'm just going to continue ballooning, ballooning as we go here. There's a little pain at the level of the pot. So Can we're going to play the ibis from the beginning. So this is starting at the level of the posterior tibial. Coming here, down. And go up here again where you had pain. Yeah. So you can see here, Lawrence, we're pretty interluminal, obviously, distally. But then you'll see proximally how it looks. Yeah, and that's why I think wrong. he's having some pain, down. Yeah, so you can see here, the ibis is pretty good as we pull back. And as we now get into the occluded segment, you're going to start to see uh, some, like some obviously, the collateral flow outside. And here, it's completely occluded. There, I don't know where we are, honestly. Uh, there, it looks like we're, we're in a subintimal plane. And then as we come forward, you can see here, again, very, very tight, very calcific. But yeah. again, now we're into the, into the popliteal. So I just ballooned this. I'm going to take a picture. Ready? DSA? Yes, sir. So inject. Hopefully we don't get any surprises. While he takes his picture, you can see that that ibis was very adventitial. The calcium moved over. So that's pain, right? So your vasovasorum is there. A lot of nerve fibers are up there, and that's where ruptures are. Yes. Yes. Okay. So now, so Lawrence, you've got a little bit of flow. So now we're going to go with the serenader. And again, Lawrence, I think it's important. We did all this from below crossing, because yesterday in the fellows course, there was a lot of discussion uh, among the fellows about actually, you know, using sheets from below. And I just wanted the panel to comment on that. How often are they using sheets from below? How often are they actually using it just across the way we demonstrated here? Yeah, so uh, 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 Peter Ferrugia was saying that he, uh, he uses, he likes the support of a catheter. Um, I was saying that I like a support catheter rather than a sheath. Um, anybody else use a sheath primarily as a, just a support catheter from retrograde? Uh, I'm a... You can kill two birds. You can kill two birds with one stone when you use an over-the-wire balloon if you're trying to look for cost savings. But I would ask before he puts this balloon up, what size balloon have you used before? And when you put this balloon up in the space of Krishnan where you uh, re-entered, uh, what do you think is going to happen? Four. I so think that's a good PK point. We really don't know. So right now, Lawrence, we're using a 3 -0 serenader. Michelle, can you describe the serenader for us a little yeah, bit? Yeah, so it's well, one of the patient will tell you. So the serenader There's is the pain. pain. The there patient will tell you with pain because you've entered the adventitia. And when you stretch that, like oh. who you were mentioning <laughs> at the other end of the panel, you the patients the typically feel fibers. that. Yeah, you can hear the patient. Yeah. Well, there's the pain with the patient. So now the question the becomes, patient. are you obligated now to stent? Because you're going to... Really you know, by ibis and coronaries, when you're very close to the adventitia, that's where you have purse. And so that's where this yep, thing is yeah. going. So it's where the kink on that balloon is. Yeah. That's exactly. the space of Krishna. That's the space of Krishna. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks a lot, Dr. Jenkins. We're going right. to go up here now, a little bit higher pressure. This is where so we're going to for, for those enthusiasts who that's like okay. balloons, it's three um, throughout your careers, you've had balloons that have been tested in nice. air. And so the nominal size is always yeah, in a non-restricted size. Right. Okay. So what you get on those normograms is based picture. on an air model, not right. in a recalcitrant or a resistant area. So, so that's why you have to over-crank balloons to crack lesions. 
the next foray into that was the sculpt balloon, right? So no, the Angia sculpt a, balloon, which oh, had little like oh, uh, ice skates that would cut the yeah, I have it very dear, sir. Uh, And then yes. you had the contrary okay. to that, which was the pillowed balloon, which was the uh, uh, the uh, chocolate balloon, the Magic Touch, for example. And that's pillows, and that's the first time a balloon actually went the volume Standard, pressure. Yeah. So that's those true. restricted titanol hoops yeah. are actually Walk controlling the balloon yeah, so it doesn't overexpand. You don't get differential expansion. Serenader is a completely different take uh -huh. on the central balloon. What it has is out pouches, right so like a perforated yeah. uh, piece of paper or you know, a manila folder that you tear. These things come out on the balloon and actually embed themselves into the arterial wall. Right. It creates a linear yeah. area of dissection, not lattice uh, formats like that are the angiosculpt. And it seems to have a fairly good ability to <laughs> uh, getting away from chocolate to just simple balloon technology to dilate arteries in a concentric way without we'll having a lot of differential expansion. Yeah. So, so we'll again, for below knee work and eventually we'll for see. above knee work, uh, not a for below knee work, it actually yeah, gives yeah, you this yeah, yeah. fairly yeah. nice generalized balloon dilatation, which uh, yeah. may actually play a very good role. So we do right a lot of balloon angioplasty for below the knee. For anybody on the panel or PK, is, no. am I missing something Roadman, on the Roadman. description? Roadman. Yeah, no, I think that was an incredible description. I was going to ask you whether <laughs> you hit every single point. So I wanted to, I wanted to tell you what we, what we did uh, before you go forward. Hold on, guys. So what, what we did was we, we used the serenader, and, th and then we did an, a, a picture. And here's the picture post serenader. You can see Serenator, I always keep the balloon, any balloon there in case uh, from the space of Krishnan, whether we perf or not. And you can see here, it looks, it looks good, Dr. Jenkins. I haven't Ivished yet. So for the sake of time now, Flora, what we're going to do is we're, 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 go, we're going and we're going to uh -huh. do Rotorex of the ISR. You know, Rotorex yeah, recently has an indication for ISR and also for native vessels. So distal, we have a calcified SFA, which we're going to do Rotorex very quickly uh, of both of these. And while we're doing the Rotorex, uh, maybe uh, Lawrence or someone in the panel could describe what Rotorex does and how it works. I just want to tell you that obviously a couple, a couple of tips about Rotorex, uh, very slow pecking, pecking motion back and forth, uh, you know, very important uh, to, to, to continue and hear the feedback of both the sound as well as the uh, tactile feedback of the device. And obviously we'll go ahead and just do it very slowly with Michelle. It comes in a six and an eight French. We're using the six French Rotorex here because we went with a seven French sheath. But it really does a great job in thrombus. That's a little too fast. A, a, a little job, you got to go back and forth. Uh, a, a little, uh, you need to go back and forth. And you also need to understand that, that in thrombus and in ISR, this works very, very well. So uh, I don't know of any comments from the panel. So to, to piggyback on that, uh, absolutely. Uh, the Rotorex is, is one of my chief, is my chief thrombectomy device. And what I use predominantly for ISR at this point. Um, I can tell you the vortex that it creates is exquisitely powerful. And, and PK, oh, one of the things that you can do, because a lot of times, um, the is still there. if it's a regular night and all stent yeah. that you're going through, you can actually see um, the stent kind of cave in around the device, especially if you're running in, in a specific segment for too long. And that's because oh. of the power of the vortex created by the, uh, the helical screw. Um, essentially, it's a cutter that has windows at, at the tip of it that will both siphon and cut plaque. Yes. The problem is, is that if it gets into an area for too long, um, it will overheat. So one of the one of the things you can do technically at the bedside is hook up a pressure bag with heparin eye saline and run it through the side arm of your sheath up and over, which will allow allow the artery to kind of stay open and give at least a little bit of pressure to keeping that stent from kind of from wetting in. Um, the other thing on top of the tactile feedback you were mentioning, Really important to keep a, a handle on the temperature of the device itself, uh, which is where that saline also comes into play because it'll keep things cool. The minute it starts to overheat, you, you either have to stop and let it sit there or uh, walk it out and reflush the device itself. But it, it's a nope. fantastic device, especially for ISR. So Brian's uh, describing, or Peter, I'm sorry, is keep describing the idea of yeah. uh, inside yeah. of this thing is an Archimedes screw, yeah. so it tends to aspirate. Right? That's why it has this thrombotic. As well as instant restenosis, uh, but it is a—it's been around in Europe for eons. It seems it just came to the United States based on European data. Okay. It doesn't have a Euro U.S. pivotal trial, which is kind of odd huh? in my are. opinion. But uh, it does That's work good. very nicely. Uh, any other comments? We had that device's so, predecessor in the past for the older people. I was going to mention the tech device. Yeah. So it was taken off the market, and the technology was then rebought and 
and is this machine. So we used to use this in vein graph. Yeah. But yeah. uh, sometimes, mentioning your points, you can use the disadvantages to your advantage for more tissue the uh, into this Archimedes screw. So if you don't pressurize so, it well, so and allow it to collapse, then you can actually use it to your advantage to make bigger holes, depending what on what you do or don't want to do with it. I didn't uh, want to mention so, so this Lawrence, so thank you. Nice. But the technology uh, that's old again is new again in the to, to add on to, the, to, to <laughs> that statement, Lawrence, so just, uh, uh, it comes Lawrence, in two sides. Just a it comes question. in a six and an eight French, and I think that uh, the primary use of the eight French device is in vein grafts, um, whether it may be saphenous or can you, um, can they hear me? Prosth prosthetic in nature. Uh, we predominantly use the six French. Can they French. hear me? Uh, I'm sure you have the 135 in because uh, you're up and over at this point. Why do you can say hear me? that stent collapses sometimes? And sometimes no, the, the panel can't hear me. So no, we can hear you, PK. We can hear you, PK. We can hear you. Oh, okay, Lawrence, while you guys are discussing, I just want to keep the case going. So question, let me take a picture now. I want to, I want to talk about how you think we should treat this uh, popliteal. We know, uh, is it going to be obviously what, what Alok spoke about? We don't have the serolumen stent here. The question is, what's the story here? Do we DCB, leave it alone? Or do we stent? If we stent, what type of stent do we use? Do we use an alluvia stent? Uh, uh, because our plan was to do a, use an alluvia stent here, uh, a DES into the in, into the posterior tibial, alluvia in the popliteal, a Megatron uh, a stent from the coronaries at the level of the distal pop into the posterior tibial, and then go ahead use a Zilver at the proximal lesion and a DCB at the other lesion. And part of the reason why we presented this case is these these are the complex cases. How do we marry all the technologies uh, to do this? So. That's kind of what we're going to do. I mean, if you have any strong objections, uh, we'll do something different. But I, I really don't know what the right answer is in these cases. So, PK, I think that you bring up a great question. So the idea is he had a CTO and he went subintimal. So now how do you deal with that? Is there, is there any consensus against stenting this uh, for the outflow? Um, I've always been the believer that if you go subintimal and you don't want to recreate a crina or anything like that, just stent it. But uh, it does become a bit of a challenge for reintervention, uh, particularly if you're going to try to salvage this, uh, this anterior tibial if you're going to stent. But it seems like for all the work you did, I think it's reasonable to go down the pass you have. Is, is there any dissenting view on the uh, panel? Well, I, could, could you back up for just one second, PK? And what was the diameter of your distal vessel? Diameter was distal three, vessel three, was a three five, five at the level of the posterior tibial. And the, the, and the diameter of the popliteal was a six. And so knowing that you have a filter that you can put there and you're using Rotorex, do you know why the tech device was taken off the market in the past? It was because mm, of the horrid embol distal embolization. Exactly. And right. so now you just mm. use the reinvention of it with no distal protection. And so again, I'll ask you know, the question I asked before. Does anybody know of any indication not to use a filter in doing this kind of work, other than size? I, I, uh, Brian honestly, may have Dr. one. Jenkins, no, but Dr. Jenkins, in, in this case, we decided not to because I didn't want to put a put a, a distal protection in that only posterior tibial that we had. And also, the, the segments we were cutting are so short. I didn't think, and Vishal's uh, technique is so good that we weren't really concerned that we were going to embolize. If we had a longer segment or thrombus or anything like that that we suspected, even it. though Dr. Narula from a Dr. Olin's lecture, his data showed that all tibials have thrombus, I think that I, I, I think clinically that's not really relevant. So in this case, that's why we didn't choose a filter. What? But for the, for the sake of time, if it's okay with you guys, I'm going to put a Megatron into the posterior tibial, a Luvia into the popliteal, and a, a, a Zilver into the SFA, and DCB the, the stent. Is that okay? That's, I think that's going to be fine. You keep working, PK. I'll just put a plug in for the Got idea it. of what future innovation may happen, which is there's a bunch of like two major Alluvia companies Megatron, three, five, looking at no, first Alluvia. Alluvia. Stent, Are you sending the public deal with Alluvia? Useful. Yeah. So you have the benefit or of drug you're sending the scaffold the what, what without using the persistence. The other one is going to be over the short lesion. So Lawrence, we just, we've just finished up uh, our angioplasty work. I'm going to show you, showing you starting with the foot shot here. We've got wonderful, you saw the picture of the ulcer, much better filling of the foot. The, the perineal still remains patent, which is going to be a target that we're going to bring her back for, him back for, scene minus. And then, and then I want to show you what we ended up doing was we, did, we followed your advice. Uh, we did, we did a, a luvia at the popliteal, and then we balloon angioplasty with coronary drug-looting stents. There's that little ridge there. 
that I'm a little wary of, of uh, because of what Dr. Jenkins, as well as what Peter was saying, is that, you know, th this is something that I'm worried about perforation. So we're going to IBIS it offline, and we need to go high-pressure balloon, we will. But I wanted to leave it for now. Next. Then we put a, a silver PTX after Rotorex in this area, a short silver, sort of like your tack talk, rather than give a full metal jacket. And then, and then proximally, we just do the, a, a uh, impact ECB for the ISR. Uh, you know, I hope this case has illustrated all the challenges all of us face when we take care of critical ischemia with multi-level disease. So we were faced with CTOs, we had different accesses, and really we tried to marry together technology that would hopefully result in a, in a, in a prolonged patency of, uh, of, this, uh, of this lesion. And God willing, we'll at least leave this gentleman with a functional foot after some surgical work that needs to be done by our colleagues. So, you know, I, I'm going to sign off here. I know we need to be on time. I want to thank Dr. Guja and Dr. Kapoor, as well as uh, Dr. Singh and the entire team here at Sinai. The one thing that we do want to show you is, it's okay. One thing we do want to show you is what we pulled out with the Rotorex. So you can see here that the amount of plaque and this clot and all this stuff, it's all intermeshed in there from the Rotorex. So it's, it's quite a bit of stuff. Uh, especially from the stent that, that we pulled out. Obviously, there's some coagulated blood on top of this, but our ACT is very therapeutic. But again, I, it's not as impressive as what Alfio was saying when it comes to the, uh, the uh, surgical light neurotractomies, but clearly it was effective here. So we're signing off, and I'll see you guys soon. Thank you again, Lawrence. Thank you to the panel. Thank you, PK. Outstanding job. As we go off to lunch, Thanks remember 1245 back in here to get back on schedule. Um, I just want a parting question to the panel for this case in particular, if anybody's interested, long-term DAPT or just short-term DAPT? Any difference or would you go to Compass? I wanted to ask that of PK, but who's, who's doing Compass primarily or DAPT? So, I, so I'm, I'm going with Compass after three months. Compass after three months, so yeah. DAPT for three months? Yeah. DAPT, Brian? Mostly DAPT. Mostly DAPT. Dr. Jenkins. We're starting to convert to Compass, but you know, we've traditionally been DAPT. And like the Olin was saying this morning, we absolutely have no data, even though every FDA approved carotid, I mean every FDA uh carotid trial that we did, yeah. we forced ourselves to extrapolate off of coronary data and use DAP for bare metal stents for a month. But and that's what we do in even carotid stents. So I don't know what to do, but we're starting to go. Compass. It's murky water here. Any? Yeah, CLI patients have completely switched to Compass. Yeah. 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 I think Compass is the future. I think it's going to change the guidelines. So it'll be very interesting. Listen, guys, thank you.